Shalom. Welcome back to Issachar Forum, a prophetic think tank sponsored by Elisha Vision Ministries. That's basically Doreen and I. <laughs> and uh, we thank you for being with us. There's a lot to talk about today, so let's get started with prayer. Father, thank you for your faithfulness that you are keeping your word to Israel to restore in these last days. You're keeping your word to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob that there would always be a a people, uh, descendants of theirs that would have your blessing and your favor. Thank you that you're restoring right now and they, they move from judgment to blessing and favor. We pray for rain and we pray for peace. Uh, and really the real peace is the peace of the Messiah for Jerusalem and for the nation. Thank you, Father. And really for the whole world. In his name we pray. Well, praise God. Have to, glad to have you with us. Um, you can find my blog anytime at www.elishavision.wordpress.com. And I hope you'll read it regularly. I did a couple blogs this week. Uh, first one was kind of fun. Uh, I found out that um, there's a, well, I've already known that there's a modern version of the Sanhedrin that was in Jesus' time. In fact, in Jesus' time, they're the ones that condemned him <laughs> to turn over to the Romans and for for crucifixion. But uh, but the modern Sanhedrin is has is in the process of minting a coin, a limited number of coins, with the picture of not only Donald Trump but Cyrus, King of Persia, uh, from ancient days. And then the inscription also includes Lord Balfour of of uh, England. And uh, it's pretty cool because uh, it's, it reflects the, the view that Israel has right now of President Trump because he has been standing with Israel in many different ways. But uh, most recently, of course, was the pronouncement of uh, the declaration from the United States that we recognize that the capital of Israel is Jerusalem and we're going to move our embassy there. And then, of course, just uh, yesterday it was announced that the embassy is going to be moved by uh, May 14th uh, this year, which is several years ahead of time from the original uh, timetable. And uh, it's going to be with it in time for the 70th anniversary of, of the Declaration of Independence of Israel in 1948. So pretty exciting things. And so this coin is being minted. It's really a, a way of raising funds for the temple, rebuilding the temple and other associated expenses of the temple uh, society or whatever. But uh, on one side, it has uh, Trump and, uh, and Cyrus. On the other side, it has uh, an outline of the temple. And uh, so it's pretty exciting. And, uh, and I, I just rejoice that, uh, that God is giving Israel favor and that because the U.S. blesses Israel, we'll be blessed, according to God's promise all the way back in Genesis. Well, the other blog I wrote was called Heal the Waters of Death and Barrenness. And it's based on Elisha. I mentioned in my blog that uh, I had the privilege uh, in 1990 of uh, stopping off in Jericho and filling my water bottles uh, out of Elisha's spring, uh, the one that he uh, threw salt in and, and took a bitter spring that wasn't, uh, the water was not uh, usable, and God healed the waters. Well, God is healing the waters today, I believe, in, on several different levels. And uh, the scripture associated with this uh, is from uh, 2 Kings 2, uh, 22, actually 21 and 22. Then he went out to the source of water and cast in the salt there and said, Thus says Jehovah, I have healed this water. From it there shall be no more death or barrenness. So the water remains healed to this day according to the word of Elisha, which he spoke. And uh, I think I've mentioned before that I'm writing a new book on Elisha. I believe we're making a transition in the body of Messiah from the days of Elijah to the days of Elisha, which represents resurrection power, healing miracles, a double portion of the Holy Spirit and so forth, and the anointing that was on Elijah. So um, all of this kind of fits together. But uh, I'm, I'm just honored, so honored and blessed that I was able to visit that spring myself. It's a little harder to get there now because it's considered in the West Bank and kind of off limits to tourists. But but uh, that was quite a joy that time in 1990, January, that I got to visit Elisha's spring. And I pray that the healing waters of Jehovah 
and Yeshua ben Yehovah will flow uh, across Israel and, and around the world in, in these last days. One of the reasons my faith has had a boost is because as we uh, have been honoring the passing of Billy Graham this week, uh, probably one of the major events in the world, really, in terms of eternal significance was uh, the, the death of Billy Graham. Although he said, if you read somewhere that I have died, don't believe a word of it uh, because I've just moved on to a better life. I'm more alive than I've ever been <laughs> and I'll be with the Lord forever. And I love that uh, confession of his declaration of his faith. And, and, uh, but I believe after 99 years of his life and 80 years of ministry, uh, ministering literally to millions. I mean, he spoke one time in South Korea and over several days, three or four days, he spoke to three and a half million people in person uh, in huge meetings there. And, uh, and I'm sure there literally have been millions of people who have been saved uh, through the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association and his ministry. So we do really honor him and thank God for him. Uh, but I believe that his passing represents a sort of a change, a turning, uh, and, and it fits in with what I've been hearing about a transition from Elijah to Elisha. So uh, more on that later, but, uh, but my faith is really boosted that God is doing something. I believe it's a new day, a new era, and uh, we honor Billy Graham and, and uh, are sad that he is no longer ministering here, but I believe God is uh, doing a new thing and it's going to be really great. I really am believing for the third great awakening and I'm believing that our nation will be a sheep nation that will follow the Lord and continue to stand with Israel. Uh, Israel Today magazine has an uh, article about the, uh, the announcement that was made, um, I guess it was Friday morning, uh, that, uh, that Trump is accelerating use, moving the embassy. Originally they were saying it was going to take four or five years, then they said it would be uh, 19 or 2019. And, uh, and now this weekend, they've said that they're going to actually open up the embassy, uh, move it into the consulate in Jerusalem so they can have the embassy already established in Jerusalem on May 14th this year, which is the 70th anniversary of Israel's uh, independence. Praise God for that. I, I just think that's wonderful. And, uh, and we are, I believe God will bless Israel and us. Um, interesting thing, Sheldon Adelson, a Republican uh, supporter that's one of the strongest Jewish supporters of President Trump, has actually offered to uh, spend as much as $500 million of his own money to help build the new embassy and move the embassy to Jerusalem. It's, the jury's still out on whether or not that's legal and whether the U.S. can accept that gift or not, but uh, I think that's also a really healthy sign. And then uh, just today, uh, or yesterday, I guess it was, Prime Minister Netanyahu announced that he's going to invite President Trump to visit Israel to inaugurate the U.S. Embassy in May. Um, and again, I, that decision hasn't been made by the president, but uh, uh, it's sure a good tribute to the great relationship that has emerged in this just this first year uh, in uh, the Trump administration. Oh, by the way, I forgot to read a scripture. I meant to read that uh, in the in context with that coin that the Sanhedrin has put out to raise money. It's a silver coin to raise money. But um, there's a, the scripture the Lord gave me with that is from uh, from Second uh, Chronicles thirty six twenty two. Starts out now in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, the word of Jehovah through the mouth of Jeremiah was fulfilled. That Jehovah stirred up the spirit of Cyrus king of Persia. So he made a proclamation throughout all the kingdom and put it in writing. And the proclamation was made in the first year of Cyrus's reign. And it was in the first year of President Trump's reign, December 6th, 2017, that he declared uh, Jerusalem to be the capital of Israel as, as official recognition from the United States. The proclamation that Cyrus gave was, uh, as I continue reading there in Second Chronicles, all the kingdoms of the earth, Jehovah, uh, God of heavens, has given me, Cyrus says, and is he, he has commanded me to build him a house at Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Who is among you of all his people? May Jehovah, his God, be with him and let him go up. And so the parallel uh, between uh, President Trump and Cyrus 
uh, really is striking. And uh, if you hadn't noticed that before, you really need to catch that and uh, appreciate it. Uh, one of the other things that Trump mentioned in uh, Times of Israel, he said that uh, many countries begged him to, to nix the Israeli embassy relocation. Don't do it, they said, but he says, I've got to do it because it's the right thing to do. We need to pray that he'll continue to hear what the right thing to do is and that he'll do that. Um, here's another exciting thing that's listed in, or it's uh, reported in the Times of Israel that um, there has been a discovery uh the, the headline says, of biblical proportions, <laughs> a seal of the prophet Isaiah. And um, I won't go into the details of it. You can find it on time, timesofisrael.com. But the seal of Isaiah, they believe, po was possibly the actual seal he would use to sign his papers, his scrolls, and so forth. Um, you know, because it's a personal seal, and it's Isaiah. Uh, and uh, what, it, what that means... We don't, we don't need to confirm Isaiah's existence. We believe the Bible. But for, pe for people who, don't, who question the Bible, this is a, the first um, evidence outside the Bible uh, of Isaiah's actual existence, actually, in, in Israel. And uh, so it's a pretty big deal. Um, also, just today, um, Prime Minister Netanyahu has decided that they're not going to continue to de debate the sovereignty law and the Knesset in this session, but they're going to wait until the summer session. And I think that's just to kind of not create controversy in this time of great celebration of the 70th anniversary. Uh, but the, in this summer, the Knesset, the Israel's parliament, will debate whether or not to, uh, to extend sovereignty over all or parts of Judea and Samaria, which the world calls the West Bank. Uh, the uh, prophecy... Uh, News Watch has a story uh, that Turkey and Iran threaten to overwhelm the West with refugees. Of course, we've been having stories about Iran and Turkey every week. Uh, in fact, in the news, just about every day. And you got to keep your eye on Turkey because I believe it's going to be the headquarters of the real Antichrist system and the, the final Islamic caliphate. But this is a threat to overwhelm the West with refugees, uh, which... To some degree, they've already been doing, especially in Europe. But now they're saying it openly. And then I follow it up with a story from Breitbart News about Angela Merkel, the, the Chancellor of uh, Germany, who's saying that European Union funds are going to be linked to accepting third world migrants. In other words, they're going to basically blackmail the other countries of the European Union. It says you won't receive the funds from the European Union unless you accept third world migrants. Uh, and and I remember we talked a few months ago about the fact that a number of the leaders of of Europe, including Angela Merkel, uh, are childless. So they don't really care about their own posterity, uh, and they're selling out Europe to the Muslims. It's pretty serious. Um, so just stay tuned for that. Um, Breaking Israel News has a good story that... Uh, Russian official warns Iran not to use de-escalation zones for military expansion. In Syria, it's talking about uh, their zones where they're supposed to be de-escalate uh, fighting, but Iran has actually been using those quiet zones to, to establish its own footprint. And uh, on the one hand, Russia is saying to Iran, don't do it. But then, uh, and then another thing Russia says to Israel, we will defend you if Iran attacks uh, but also will defend Iran's presence in Syria. So it's definitely mixed signals from Russia. And uh, I don't believe we can trust them at all. So just stay tuned for that again. And in fact, uh, two more Russian top-line Su-57 uh, uh, stealth fighters have landed in Syria. There's four of them now being based in Syria. These are the, the uh, absolute state-of-the-art Russian stealth jets, bombers that are now in Syria. And uh, so if I'm Israel, I'm not that comfortable that Putin says he's going to help defend Israel. I, I wouldn't hold my breath on that one. Uh, the other start, part of that story that's pretty neat about the fact that these uh, planes have been spotted there is that uh, they were spotted there by an Israeli satellite, which tells you several things, that Israel has satellites, that they have satellites that that can uh, uh, 
basically spy on Syria and the surrounding areas. And uh, so as the satellite images actually revealed this. Praise the Lord for that. And uh, Israel National News reporting on Abbas. I told you last week that he, speak, he spoke last Tuesday to the uh, UN Security Council. And one of the things he said is, we are the Canaanites. <laughs> he claims that the, that the Palestinians are the Canaanites, which is really ridiculous. But uh, it's just part of their claim. They're, trying to, they're saying they're the Philistines. They're the Canaanites. They're the this or that. And all that's simply to they want to claim that they've been there for thousands of years like Israel, who actually has been there uh, for 4,000 years. So uh, that's just another part of the silliness that, that Abbas is always doing. Hamas is actually now saying that his days are numbered, and I think that's probably true. Of course, he's 82 years old anyway, but I think he's on the way out. And, uh, and yet, he's not going out with, uh, without making a lot of noise. Um, Palestinian leaders, Israel Today reports that Palestinian leaders are angry that Israel won't pay terrorist salaries <laughs> in the same way that the U.S. is going to deduct our, our payments, uh, our, our benevolence to the Palestinians. We're going to deduct anything that they pay to the terrorists and their families. We're going to deduct that from our payments. Israel's going to do the same thing. And, uh, and so the, the Palestinian leaders are angry uh, that Israel won't continue to give the money that they're using to pay terrorist salaries. And I mean terrorists in prison. And their families. And it's actually, there's a scale of how much you get paid. If you've murdered somebody, if you murdered five civilians or whatever, you get more and more money. And it's monthly and annually. And the family gets a, a pension. And, and I mean, it's a real uh, uh, corrupt, evil business uh, that pays for terrorism. Well, um, the ambassador of Israel to uh, the United Nations, Danny Danyon, uh, commented on Abbas. He says, you're not part of the solution. You're part of the problem. And uh, I believe that's absolutely true. Um, little update on the uh, potential for elections. In parliaments, you can have elections called any time. It's not due for another couple of years. But if they had elections right now, even with the accusations against uh, Netanyahu for corruption and various things similar to going on here against Trump, same spirit. But... Uh, in spite of that, the the Likud faction, the, uh, Netanyahu's government, is actually in polling, gaining seats. Uh, every week they've been gaining about two seats. So that's kind of neat. Um, and uh, there's a couple more things I want to mention here before we go. And uh, one of them is that um, a couple of congressmen from the U.S. are visiting Israel at the present time. And they actually made this statement uh, in favor of the sovereignty movement and uh, declared that, uh, that Israel is, uh, the land of Israel is Jewish land. Uh, the land of Israel is Jewish land. Two congressmen in Israel at the time. Praise God. Bless them, Lord. <laughs> and um, Breaking Israel News uh, has a story about uh, the Episcopal Church bans gender pronouns for God, contradicting the actual Hebrew text. Uh, they're getting rid of pronouns. Uh, God is no longer going to be a he in the Episcopal Bible. Unbelievable. Uh, but uh, that's just where we are in these days. I um, also want to mention that uh, this week, starting uh, Wednesday uh, at sundown, the 28th, is Purim. And uh, so you want to be in touch, be in prayer, and uh, celebrate Esther and Mordecai and the, the victory in, in that uh, period of Israel's history. And then one final thing, I mentioned that there was a drought in South Africa. Uh, they just had a sudden change of government where the corrupt leader resigned. And the day he resigned, right after he resigned, they had a downpour in, in northern uh, South Africa. And uh, I think that was a sign from the Lord. So, well... I think that's enough for today. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your faithfulness. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem, for rain to come. And we thank you for sending the Messiah, your Son. In, the name, in his name we pray. Uh, amen. Hallelujah. Shalom, shalom. Bye-bye.